that we can start the engagement strong. Blessings to you, and we will uh, pray together shortly.
worship you. We give you glory. We give you honor, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. of the Lord Jesus Christ the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God love of God <laughs> the love of God and the communion the shared space the shared feelings the shared heart the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. on that the grace unmerited favor the empowerment of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the love of the Father the unconditional agape of God and the communion the shared space the fellowship the shared feelings of his heart, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. I give you praise. I give you worship. I adore your holy name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. 
the righteous run into it. They find their shelter in your name. The name of the Lord. Though the righteous stumble seven times, the Lord upholds him by his right hand. The Lord makes a path for you. He makes a way in the wilderness. He causes you to be filled with fruitfulness, with joy, with singing. The Lord puts laughter in your heart. The Lord fills your mouth with good things. The blessing of the Lord, and the angel of the Lord, is with those who fear Him. There is no lack in those who wait for you. There is no disappointment in those who revere and love you. You are the sustainer of our soul. You are the feeder of our spirits. You are the father of our spirits and we worship you. We worship you in spirit. We worship you in truth. We give you glory and we give you honor. There is none like you. Even the young ones stumble and fall. Even the young, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Those who wait on you will mount up with wings as of eagles. Those who wait on you shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. You are the living water. You are the living bread. You are the rock in which we stand. We worship you. presence of God overshadow you today. Let his very glory be your embrace as you seek his face here in this place. Worship him. soar to you. Let my heart soar to you today. Soar in the wind of your spirit as we elevate you. faces. You are the bread of the presence. 
You're the sustainer, the feeder. We feast on you. where you are, just worship him. Just begin to give him praise. Begin to give him thanks. Consecrate yourself. Set yourself apart for him. Apart for you, O oh Lord, and only you. sweetness of heaven is here. Oh, hallelujah. His tender mercies are here. His compassions fail not. His mercies are new every morning. He casts your sin as far as the east is from the west and remembers them no more. Come, Freely receive. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah.
the Spirit of God minister to your spirit today. As you minister to Him, you and Him, is your habitation the Lord is your safety and your canopy he is your shelter he is your shelter you can confide in the Father canopy like a tent that you can just nestle in and live in let him be your covering let him be your covering
He who dwells, who dwells, he who dwells. lives, who makes his residency, who makes his home, who makes his living place and space, he who dwells in this secret place. Of the most high. He is most high. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The shadow of the Almighty, the abiding under the shadow of the Almighty is given to he who makes his tent, his dwelling place, the secret place of the Most High. dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That word dwell means a seat, a couch, knees, throne ground, a place of humiliation, sitting with purpose to remain, to stay, to tarry. He who tarries of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In Him I will trust. Surely He shall 
he shall deliver you he shall from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge his truth shall be your shield and buckler why because you dwell in the secret place you shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday a thousand may fall at your side ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near you it shall not come near you only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the Lord who is my refuge even the Most High your dwelling place no evil shall befall you because you have made the Lord who is my refuge even the Most High your dwelling place Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you. No evil. shall any plague come near your dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over you mm, to keep you in all your ways in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone shall tread you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot because he has set his love upon me he has set his love upon me I will deliver him I will set him high because he has known my name I will deliver him because he has set his love upon Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He 
shall call upon me, and I will answer him. You will call upon him, and he will answer you. I will be with him in trouble. will deliver him and I will honor him with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation of God. He's faithful. Yes, let him hug you. Let him embrace you as you set your love on him. He is the path for your feet. He's a light for your path. Your word, O oh Lord, is a lamp unto my feet. the light of this world. I worship your love on him there is a deep well waiting for you for you to receive set your love on him what does that mean to set your love it means when you set something you prepare it when you set a table you put the dishes down you take that moment focus on what you're doing and you purposefully adjust and set to set your love means to purposefully put your love on the Lord throw your love on the Lord set your love on him he cares for you the spirit says that he gives you peace and guidance 
Some of you are needing guidance and peace. Some of you are not clear on what, what path to walk on and you're troubled. Don't be troubled. Set your love on Him and He will direct you. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. All of your heart. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Do not lean in your own thinking. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Acknowledge Him. Give Him glory. Give Him praise. Give Him worship. Give Him your love. Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. And He will, not might, He will direct your path. He can be trusted. Throw yourself to Him. such a gentle peace that the Holy Spirit is depositing in some of you. Let Him be your shepherd. Let Him shepherd over you. The Lord is calling you to simple fellowship. He leads you by the still waters. He restores you. Some of you are being plagued by many attacks, multiple attacks at once. You take that and throw it to his feet. You take that and you lift it before him. And he will take that snake and turn it into a rod because he's your shepherd. He takes care of his children. Yeah. I keep seeing over and over, over and over. It's like 50 times I'm already seeing this. Well, maybe not that much, but at least 10 times I keep seeing feet walking, paths walking. walking, going. He leads you in paths of righteousness. It's not even for your sake, it's for His name's sake. He's 
su he's such a gentle shepherd. Mm. the compassion of Christ is here. Just open your heart to receive Him. The compassions of Christ the meek he clothes the humble he lifts up the poor he responds to those who call to him from a broken heart of his feet a wedding ring a commitment I saw blessing coming out of that be committed to staying with the Lord wedding ring come out of his foot take it be committed to the Lord commit 
point your way to him. Because we love you. When you love him, he washes you. Yes. When you love him, he cleanses you. Love him. Love him. to prayer requests in a moment. Worship the Lord.
worship you. We worship you, Lord.
become hungry and desperate for you, Holy Spirit. We come ready for encounter with you. Nothing else will do. Nothing else will do. We want the King of Glory. Nothing else will do. We welcome the King of Glory. Nothing else will do. We honor the King of Glory. No one else will do. We honor you, Holy Spirit, and we welcome your ways and we welcome your words. You are King among us. Jesus, you are King among us. And we worship you. Give them praise. Give them glory. Spirit, I pray right now that you, Lord God, would speak to us by the power of your Holy Spirit. First and foremost, I pray for every single person that's on this stream right now. For those who are in need of healing, I come into agreement with them for healing, Lord. For those who need a touch from you, I pray, Father, that you would not just touch them, but you would saturate them. For those who have a loved one who is in the hospital, someone suffering, in need, I pray that you would touch them by the power of your Spirit. Lord, those needing guidance, I pray, Father God, that you would bring guidance. Father, those who are ailing, I pray that you would bring healing. Anyone that is struggling with cancer, I saw a comment earlier about someone who had can husband has cancer. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name, I come into agreement. We curse cancer in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for healing 
of people's bodies right now. Whatever it is is going on. Whether it be an infection, whether it be a cancer, whether it be something in their body, whether it be lupus, whether it be gallstones, whether it be something in the in the renal ducts, whether it be a disorder in the body, I pray for a perfect order in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for people's souls right now. I pray for everyone's mind that is in need of healing, whether it be deliverance from an addiction or a deliverance from an intrusive thought or wickedness or oppressions or torments or terrors. I see you're cutting that off by the power of the Holy Spirit. The cutting off is under the fountain. That as they go into the river of your presence, you are cutting things off of people's minds, over their will, over their emotions. We thank you, Father God, for soundness of mind in the name that is above every name, that in the name of Jesus, we come into agreement for healing. Any stronghold, Father, I thank you for touching people's souls. Father, I pray for people's spirits now, that you would cause your people to be made right with you. That people would be dominant, spirit dominant, that their spirits would override their flesh. Strengthen spirits today. Yeah. Strengthen spirits today. Strengthen the human spirit of man. I pray that you would make the spirit of man, the born again, recreated spirit of man to be strengthened and that people would be spirit first, that they would be spirit led and spirit sensitive. Father, I pray for the healing of the whole man, the whole woman in the name of Jesus. Wholeness, completeness, salvation, healing, deliverance, peace, peace in homes, peace with children, peace for families. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke the spirit of rebellion from people's families. We thank you, Lord. For rebellion being broken. Bring clarity of mind. Clarity of soul. Clarity of spirit. Father, I pray specifically the prayers that are found in Ephesians chapters 1 and 3. I pray, Father, for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to be given to your children, that the eyes of their hearts would be flooded with light so they may know the glorious hope of your calling. They would know your, their inheritance, what's been given to them as the sons and daughters of God. I pray for faith to be strengthened 
in Jesus' name. I pray for Ninong. We release healing for her husband from cancer. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray for faith to be strengthened and love to be strengthened for one another so that we may be recipients of the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the deep and intimate fellowship, knowledge, the knowing of who you really are. Most of all, I pray for the deep and intimate knowing of you in the name of Jesus. I pray that your power would impart strength to people's spirits. For this reason, Ephesians 3 says, I bow my knees from whom every family on earth and heaven is named that he would grant to you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power, with might in the inner man by his spirit so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith so that you would be able to comprehend how high, how wide, how deep is the love of Christ so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. I pray for the filling of all the fullness of God. Father, we pray for provisions to be made, met in Jesus' name. People's housing situations, people's renting situations, people's debts. I pray for provisions in Jesus' name. I pray specifically there's someone watching and you've, you've been bound by confusion. We sever that in Jesus' name. All confusion All confusion, all sexual confusion be severed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world right now. Lord, I'm asking you to strengthen the believers in Thailand, in Taiwan, in the Philippines, in all of Asia, all the parts of Africa, Europe, and the remainders of the world. I thank you for being with them. I pray right now I just see a couple of things I want to share this here I saw this image of a man being chained up by his back and this bird was on him and he had makeup on his face and I saw tears streaming down on the bed and I don't I don't know exactly if that's for someone watching or someone is watching but there's this confusion, this sexual confusion. And I want you to know that the remedy is the love of God. The solution is the love of the Father. You've not known the love of a Father, but the Lord says He is the Father to the fatherless. And the root of that healing will be the revelation of the Father.
someone else. I don't know if you've had a premature child, prematurely. I saw a little, little, little baby. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for safety for that little one. Healing and wholeness for that little one. All fear of what if be gone from the parents. In Jesus' name, peace, we thank you for recovery and strength to enter that little one. Father, we thank you for cancer cells being destroyed by the anointing. Your anointing, your presence, that your fire would burn it up. We come into agreement with Ninong. We come into agreement with the others. Hallelujah. Now I want us to thank the Lord. Listen carefully. Thank Him. Mark 11 chapter, Mark chapter 11 verse 24 says, Mark 11, 23 and 24 says the following. It says, have faith in God. Other translation says, have the faith of God. For truly I tell you, you can speak to this mountain to be cast into the sea. And he who believes in his heart and does not doubt can have what he asks, can have whatsoever he says. Therefore, when you pray, believe that you have received and you shall have. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Amen. I thank you, Lord. That bodies are healed. I thank you ahead of time people are restored. I thank you ahead of time. There's a tumor that I saw that I see. It's being washed by the fountain of living water. It's being dissolved in Jesus name. Goiters be removed in Jesus name. Father, we thank you for healing bodies. We thank you that you hear us when we pray. We thank you for the good reports. Just thank him. Thank him from, for the good reports. Thank him that God hears your prayers. Thank him that you have received. Thank him. Stand on that. Mark 11. 24. Therefore, when you pray, believe that you have received them. You shall have. So, Father, we thank you for restoration. I thank you ahead of time for all the powerful testimonies that are going to come in the days and weeks and months to come. Thank you that you yourself will be glorified in Jesus' name. Jesus mighty name hallelujah we thank you father we worship your holy name we give you glory and we give you praise in Jesus mighty name hallelujah
morning, Richard. Good morning, heavens. Mm. Yeah, the Lord is refreshing some of you. Hallelujah. He's so good and faithful and wonderful. Hallelujah. We worship you. Praise the Lord. Isn't God wonderful? Isn't He worthy to be praised? Isn't He worthy to be adored? If you can, please do me a favor. We're going to get right into the Word. We're going to get right into the Word today. I believe it'll be a blessing to you. Do me a favor and like this stream so that the engagement of the stream will be able to reach more people for the glory of God. Can you please do that for me? That would mean very much to us and our team. The more likes we can get, the more YouTube throws it into the algorithm of the current uh, uh, engagements for YouTube. I don't really know the full thing, but I understand that's how it works. So again, I always say this, I'm not looking for likes for the sake of likes. I'm not looking for you to like the stream because I want likes. I'm trying to use the intelligence and the wisdom of reaching more people. And so there is a algorithm that is a very real thing that needs to be tweaked so that it reaches more people. And this is why the channel has grown so quickly in the, in the last few uh, months because of the likes and the shares youtube sends it to more and more people i see it according to the uh the analytics of the page so it really does make a big difference amen amen all right we're gonna get right into it amen this is philippians chapter what chapter chapter one i'm going to read philippians chapter one and we're going to start in verse three we're going to start in verse three I will respond to questions at the close of the stream so as to not create distractions and confusion. So if you do have a question, you could put a cue in front of that question and um, let's give me one second guys. There's better all right 
sorry. There's just something on the on my feet here that I'm listening to that's kind of acting weird. Okay, I fixed it. Um, we are in Philippians chapter one. Okay. Now, uh, at the at the towards the end of this, um, if you have a question, you could put a cue in front of it. If I have time, I'll be able to respond. If you have a testimony, please put a T in front of that so that I can see it. We'll do that towards the end. But um, for now, let's let's hold the questions, the testimonies at the end so as to not create distraction. Amen. Thank you for your understanding. This is Philippians chapter one. And it begins as follows. It says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine making requests for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ just as it is right for me to think this of you all because I have you in my heart in as much as both in my chains and in the defense of the confirmation of the gospel you all are partakers with me of grace for God is my witness how greatly I long with you all with the affection of Jesus Christ Christ. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more and in all discernment and that you may approve the things that are excellent and that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. This is a fee, this is Philippians chapter 1 verses 3 through 10 through 11. And we're going to break this down and we'll we'll break this down verse by verse, but then what I'm also going to do is we're going to hone in onto one specific idea that is conveyed in this verse and then we're going to go from there okay now watch this here's Paul and Paul is speaking to the church of Philippi to the Philippian believers that are there and may I add I would highly encourage you to read Ephesians Philippians and Colossians. I would encourage, if you want to know where to read, if you want to know where to start, I encourage you to read Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. Uh, theologians refer that to as the power epistles. The power epistles. The reason why they call it the power epistles is because there's so much powerful um, revelations from Christ through Paul in Philippians, Ephesians, and Colossians. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. I encourage you to read, uh, to just really, really, really read those over and over. I mean, you can spend a lifetime unveiling and unpacking all of those things that are being communicated. Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. You want to walk in victory? You want to walk in revelation? You want to walk in the fullness of the things of the Spirit? Man, read Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. Read, read it in, the, in a way that you understand it. And also read it um, in the Amplified Bible, the Amplified Classic, the AMPC version. It's awesome. It really breaks down the original meanings. And um, man, you can just relish those three epistles and um, it's powerful. Amen? Okay. 
I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Now I want you to see something and I want you to notate something. Paul the Apostle, mighty, mighty, mighty man of God. Paul wrote three quarters of the New Testament. It was Paul that had an amazing encounter, a powerful encounter with the living Christ. He was knocked out of his horse and he in, it received the encountering, empowering presence and power and glory of Christ. Paul, a man who was so infused with the spirit of revelation, he wrote three-fourths of the New Testament. And I want you to see something. Paul was a man who operated in a very heavy anointing. The anointing was so strong on Paul that the book of Acts declares that people would put handkerchiefs and aprons on his body and, and, and the power of Christ and the resurrection power glory of Christ was so strong on Paul's physical body that people were healed when they touched those handkerchiefs and cloths. Why? Because Paul had a revelation of Christ in him. Paul had a revelation that he was the tent, the tabernacle of the glory of Christ. Paul had a revelation of the resurrected Savior living and moving and ebbing and flowing through him. If there is ever a revelation we need, we need in this hour, it is this revelation, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is the greatest need in this hour for the church to understand that Christ is in you the hope of glory now I, with this man who had tremendous power who flowed in heavy anointing there was something that a lot of people don't really take the time to appreciate about Paul and it was this how much he loved how abounding the fruit of the spirit was in Paul's life People look at the power and the anointing that flowed from Paul. People look at the wonder-working, miracle-working power that flowed through the hands of Paul, the strange and unusual miracles that occurred in his ministry. But often more so than that, the scriptures, especially throughout all of the epistles of Paul, you will notice the love of God that flowed through Paul. You see, miracles, signs, and wonders operate through and by faith. But faith works by love. I'll say that again. Signs, wonders, and miracles, prophecies, and gifts operate through faith, by faith. But faith works by love. The engine of faith. The functions of faith, the mechanic of faith, is the engine of love. Many want to walk in the power, but few want to walk in love. And so look at the love of God that's conveyed in verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you I thank my God upon every remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine making requests for you all with joy Paul was selfless He had every reason to complain. He was shipwrecked twice. He was whipped two, three times, 39 lashes. He was persecuted everywhere he went. He was left for dead twice. In the midst of all of that, 
he was preoccupied with the love of the body. He was in love with the bride of Christ. He was in love with Christ and in love with the bride of Christ. Be very careful. Be very careful around those who abuse the wife of Jesus, the church. Be very careful with those who are suspicious and censure harshly the wife of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, the church. There is so many people who hate the body. There are ministers and preachers. There are people who've been offended by the church, and rightly so. But we should never spurn the wife, the bride of Christ, the church. When you learn to love Jesus and love whom he loves, which is his body, the church, you will operate in greater dimensions of love and anointing. Do not allow offense and rebellion to spurn you. Do not allow things of the past. Maybe someone hurt you. Maybe you've been around the church. Maybe you've been overwhelmed with the stagnation and the crisis of the, of the body. But you should never spurn her. You ought to love the very thing that Christ treasures the most, which is the church. And look at what Paul is saying here. He says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, of always and always and every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy. See, that was the heart of Paul for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now let's stop there. What was Paul's prayer? What was his confidence rather of this very thing? It was this. He says, I'm confident. I'm being confident in this very thing. There was a confidence that came from the heart of Christ into the heart of Paul. And it was this, a confidence that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. If you are in Christ, he is faithful to complete the good work in you he is faithful 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 to finish that which he has started in you you may have started off weak you may have started off with a lot of insecurities you may have started off with a lot of issues but Christ is faithful to complete the good work in you. Now notice what you see here. He says, being confident, verse 6, of this very thing, he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ, which means this, it is Jesus that does the work in you. Your job is to yield. His job is to work. Your job is to receive his job is to rearrange. It is his job to do the good work in you. Your job is to yield, to allow. The word yield means to allow, to let, to not fight against, but to receive. What do we see in verse 6? Being confident of this very thing. I'm 
highlighting it. That he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? That's, that means that he started a work in you. Maybe you've been saved five minutes, five years, 50 years. Doesn't matter. He began a good work in you and he will complete it. He will complete it until the day of his return. Some of you may have real battles. Some of you may feel very real things, very real needs. But, but there's a confidence that's seen in verse 6. That he who has begun a good work in you will complete it. Every day you grow stronger. As the days and months and the years progress, you grow in him, separating you to himself. Your job is to yield. When you yield to him, you begin to yield his fruit. The word yield is also an agricultural word. What is an agricultural word? An agricultural word is a word that's relation that's relational to farming. That's a that has a relationship to farming. And so when farmers go and and and, and crop a a uh, a a yield, they call it a yield. When a farmer goes and sows a seed, he doesn't make that seed grow. He's, he, can, he can sow the ground, he can sow the seed, he can water it. But the one who causes the growth, the one who causes the full yield of that crop is God. The, the Bible says it like this. When Jesus said, he said, the kingdom of God is like a man who threw seed into the ground and fell asleep and woke up the next day and saw the corn, the ear, then the grain, then, then the corn. And he does not know how it happened. It happened overnight. It is the same in God's kingdom. In the same way, you can cultivate your fellowship with God. You can water the seed of the work of God that he's done with you through the word and through prayer. But he is the one that does the work. Your job is to simply yield. He becomes the increase. It is he that does the work. It is we that yield. So in the same way, when a farmer sows seed and it yields a crop, he harvests it. It's the same with us. God began a good thing and he is going to complete that good work. He is going to yield that harvest until the day of Jesus Christ. So you can rejoice. <clears throat> you might be you might be broke, busted, and disgusted. But he is the one that finishes the work. Verse 7. Just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart. Again, hear the heart of the Father through Paul. Inasmuch as both in my chains and in the defense of the confirmation of the gospel... You are all partakers with me of grace. Now let's stop there. What is he saying? Paul says, it's right for me to think this of you all, that he who began a good work will complete it because I have you in my heart. For it's right for me to think this of you. And then look what he says, in as much both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers with me in grace. He's, he's, even in his chains, someone needs to hear this. Even in his chains, <laughs> he is thinking of the church. Some of you, even in your chains, you can be used of God, called of God to release the love of God to his people. <clears throat> Verse 8. Oh, and then the latter part of verse 7, he says, You are all partakers with me of grace. There is a principle that, that, that those who were 
aligned with Paul, those who were a part of Paul's ministry were partakers of the grace of Paul. And guess what? That same grace that operated through Paul is the same grace that operated now, that operates even now. When we read these words, when we read these letters, all of the letters of Paul start with grace and peace be multiplied to you. That is to say that grace and peace is multiplied at the receiving of the letters of Paul. Grace and peace is multiplied at the reception of God's words. As you ingest the scriptures, as you receive the word of God, as you hold fast the doctrine, the epistles that are found in the New Testament, grace and peace is multiplied to you. You want to walk in great peace. You want peace and grace to be multiplied. Get into the word of God, friends. Receive the partaker of that grace. The partaking, rather, of that grace. You see, when you join with those who have grace, you yourself walk in the same grace that they do. Have you ever been around someone? I've seen it many times in my life that when I'm around a particular person in the Lord, their grace, their grace gets transferred onto to me. There is a partaking of the grace of God. Does that make sense? Partake of the grace. You can partake of the grace of God through faith and fellowship in Christ, through faith and fellowship with the Word of God, and also faith and fellowship with other believers. Verse 8. For God is my witness. And this is where I really want to hone in on. For God is my witness. How greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. You see, because we're all together, I'll say this in relationship to verse 8. How many of you have noticed that grace has increased in your life since you've been a part of these streams? How many of you have noticed a partaking of grace? Why? Because something happens when we're all in the same heart. There's a partaking of grace that begins to occur. And then verse 8 says, For God is my witness, how I greatly long for you with the affection of Jesus Christ. And then he says, and we'll get into verse 8 again, okay? And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God now listen this is what I want to get to right here this whole this whole thing this is what we're going to talk about today and this is what I pray becomes a meditation for you For God is my witness, how greatly I long with you, long for you with all the affection of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in all knowledge, in all discernment, that you may be, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere, being filled without offense till the day of Christ being filled with the fruits of righteousness, 
which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Now watch this. Verse 8 says, For God is my witness how greatly I long for you all. With what? He says, I long for you all by what? He says, I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. In the King James, I believe it says, for God is my witness how greatly I long with you all with the bowels of Christ. The bowels are the intestines, the insides, the guts. It's a weird word, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a deep innards, the inward parts of Christ. See, here was Paul's mystery. Paul's mystery was this. He, the reason why he was able to abound in so much love for the church was because he loved them with the love of Christ. He loved them with the affection of Jesus. In other words, Paul affectionately loved the people of God, not with his own love, but the love that proceeded from Christ through the Spirit of God within Paul's heart. You see, how can we walk in love the word love here is the Greek word agape, and it means the love of God. The love of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, for, for love, for, for, the, for the Holy Spirit, hope does not disappoint, for the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom was given to us. Now, this is, this is what we need to understand here. God is calling us to walk in His love. It's not our love. You see, human love and human affection can only love based on specific conditions. The love of God that is shed only by the Holy Spirit is without measure and without conditions. You can actually love people from the bowels of Christ. You can actually love people with the affections of Jesus. You can love people through the feelings of Jesus' heart because you can. It's perfect. His love flows through you by the Holy Ghost. Now, in Romans chapter 5, it says that the Holy Spirit sheds that love in our hearts which means this there is a shedding that the spirit has given a love that has been shed at the moment of salvation when you've received Christ but there is a continual shedding of the love of God that is waiting to be received daily and daily given Peter said these words in the book of Acts. He said, silver and gold have I none, but what I do have I give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the lame man at the gate called Beautiful walked. See, there's a principle. You can only give that which you have. You can only give out that which you have received. And God is calling you in this moment to receive His love daily so that you can give out His love 
continually. He is a wellspring and fountain of love. He is a wellspring and fountain of love. We are leaky vessels. That means daily, we have to come continually before Him. And receive continually and be filled continually before Him so that we can continually give out. You see, this is what is most important to the heart of God. It's not the sign and the wonder. It's not the miracle and the casting of demons. It's the love of God. The Lord is more impressed and moved by how in the manner that you love than doing works for him. It was John, the apostle of love, that said in 1 John that we have boldness to enter in even in the day of judgment with all boldness by the love of God. You see, this is why in Matthew 7, 23, Jesus says, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? In your name cast out many devils? Your name heal the sick? And Jesus said, and I will tell them plainly, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Do you know what that means? A worker of iniquity? Iniquity is a sin that cannot be seen on the outside. Transgressions are acts of sin. Iniquity is the condition of sin in the heart. Another translation says, you who break God's laws, I don't know you. What is the commandment that we love one another? No greater love has a man than this to lay down his life for others. And John, it says, you've received a commandment, not an, a new one and, and, and an old one from the beginning, that you love one another. Jesus said these words. He said, by this will all men come to know me. Not that you can do miracles, although I am not against miracles. I believe in miracles. Not that you can cast out devils, although I believe in casting of devils. It's important. Not that you can speak in myriads of tongues, although we speak with other tongues here. But that you love one another. This I pray. And this is how the world will come to know me, he says in John 17 that we become one. You see, oneness is only achieved through love. For God, verse 8, is my witness. How I greatly, I long for you with all the affection of Jesus Christ. You want to grow in love? Grow in Christ. You want to receive and give out that love? Then let him love on you. When you allow the Lord to love on you, you can love with that love that you've received. You are not called to love people from your own soulish love, of your own finite, corrupted, sensual, carnal version of love. You are called to be recipients of the love of God and to be channels of that love. We need to love with the love of Christ. The love that comes from Him. How do I get to that? You come to Him. 
you receive from him by the Holy Spirit. The more you are in the presence of God, the more you will love the Lord and others because it is a fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, goodness, gentleness, meekness, kindness, faithfulness, self-control. The fruit of the Spirit begins in love. There's no such thing as fruits, plural, of the Spirit. It is the fruit of the Spirit. And it is the fruit of the love of God that abounds and displays all of the attributes of that fruit. For God is my witness, how I long for you with the affection of Jesus Christ. Now, what am I trying to say? If you get into the Spirit, if you get into the presence, love will be the byproduct of your life. It will be the fruit of the Spirit in your life. Verse 9, and this I pray, and what is he praying? That your love, your love may abound still more and more where in knowledge and all discernment that you may approve the things that are excellent what does that mean love see love does not mean head knowledge because the scripture says that knowledge puffs up but love edifies so this knowledge is not an earthly knowledge it is a knowing of Christ this I pray that your love might still abound more and more you can say it is as the experiential knowing the love abounds more and more in the knowledge of Christ it's not earthly knowledge it's not earthly intellectual intelligence. If that is the case, then the scriptures would therefore be contradictive in saying that knowledge puffs up and love edifies. The love, the knowledge here is the knowing of Christ. It's the Greek word epigonosi, epigonosis. It's, it's the knowing, the recognition. How do we come to know this love? By learning to recognize Him who is love. How does love abound still more and more? In the knowing of Him. In all discernment. You see, here's the thing. Most people that say they have discernment don't have discernment. I've got discernment. I don't like that person. That ain't discernment. That's not love. That's not true discernment. Oh, that if, if all you see is sin over people and all you see is bad things over people, that's not the, the discernment that comes from above. That is a sensual, pseudo-spiritual, false discernment. True discernment will see things for what they are through the filter of love. If you think discernment is always finding fault and always seeing the worst, and always seeing something wrong, that ain't discernment. Because it is in relationship with love. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge, the epigonosi, the knowing of him. That word epigonosi comes from the, from the word genosis, which is the same word, I don't know you. 
in Matthew 7, 23. And it's also the same word that Mary said to the angel Gabriel when he said, when she said, I don't know a man. It's the same biblical word, which means intimate intercourse. It is a knowing of deep intimacy. It is a discernment that comes out of that place. You see, when there's real discernment, even what you see that is incorrect, you will be able to speak life and order and restoration to that not cut down and destroy the person you build the person you correct the person with the love of christ verse 10 that you may approve the things that are excellent that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Now let's stop there. Sorry, guys, I keep scratching my nose. My mustache is going into my nose. <laughs> All right, now listen. He says, I pray that your love would grow more and more in all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent. You see, there is an excellent will of God for your life. There's an excellent will of God for your life. But that excellent will of God for your life, that thing that is most excellent can only be found in love. Some of you have left people, churches, relationships, prematurely and have missed the blessing that you could have had if you chosen love. And this is not a word of condemnation. Not at all. Not a word of condemnation. But a word to exhort you and to encourage you to approve the things that are excellent. Some of you have had opportunities for a good thing. But because you got critical, judgmental, indefensive, insecure, and not chosen love, you've missed it. But don't worry. God is faithful, and he will cause you to go through the same mountain again until you pass. You see, there is an approving of the things that are excellent through love. There is an approving of the excellent things that comes when you choose love. When you love, you can rightly approve something. When you choose love and when the love of God comes into you and you give out that love, the love of God that you've received will be able to cause you to approve that which is excellent in your life. I cannot tell you how many times this man here has personally not chosen love. I've had situations where God would bring me to a place where he is inviting me to mature, inviting me to choose love but because of my carnal thinking, my insecurities, my easily being offended self, there were moments where I dropped the ball. But God was faithful and causing me to repeat it until I learned it. Some of you want to walk in the will of God, the perfect will of God. Are you willing to choose love? Because if you choose love, you choose God. And if you choose God, you choose his will.
See, you see, it's easy to see the glamour. It's easy to see the, wow, look at this. But you don't know the process. I've been through some endurance issues. I've been through some love issues. I've been through some hurts. And every time the Holy Spirit says, there's a wound there. You're seeing, you're seeing the issue with that brother, with that sister, through your insecure wound. You're seeing the, you're seeing the situation not with my love. I used to have so many insecurities and it stemmed from my wound of hurt and pain that came from the church. And every time the Lord would allow me to go to a similar situation, I would reflect and operate out of the place of ouch instead of the place of love. And I've almost walked away from very powerful blessings in my life had it not been for the Spirit course correcting me. I could have missed what God was doing. Some of you are offended at your pastor. Some of you choose to be obstinate against leaders. Some of you are offended with a brother and a sister. This comes from a place of a wound. And until that wound is not healed, listen, you will not fulfill the perfect and most excellent will of God for your life. Until you allow the Holy Spirit to bring healing and bring you to a place of wholeness, you will go from church to church, from conference to conference, from movement to movement, from deliverance to deliverance, without going anywhere until you allow the Holy Spirit to come in and bring healing to you through His love. You see, it's not a popular thing but it's a necessary thing. We're still talking about verse 9. This I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge, the knowing of Him, in all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent through this love, that you may be sincere and without offense Till the day of Christ. You see, you must let go of offense. You must let go of offense. This is really good. I like what Heather and Leah says. You're dead, which means unwoundable. You must die to yourself. You can't kill a dead man. What does this mean, to be sincere and without offense? It means that God wants you to be sincere in your heart. If you have bitterness, if you have malice, if you have strife, if you have rebellion, if you have unforgiveness, that's not having a sincere heart. Why? Because love, love covers a multitude of sin. You know what's a really great way to overcome that? Think about how much the Lord has forgiven you. And you're holding on to an offense? You've slapped the Lord through your sin. You've rebelled against God through your own sin. And He still forgave you. And you can't forgive that person? You've been forgiven. You've been redeemed. You've been ransomed from death to life. 
all of your sins, all of your thoughts have been forgiven and you can't let go? Offense is a deadly weapon. It's a deadly weapon. Because what happens is the offense looks like this. It's like you drinking poison and you're expecting the other one to die. And the other one walks away scot-free. And you die. I'll save questions for the end. If you have a question concerning this, I'll, I'll be more than happy to answer towards the end. Some of you have ministries that are from the Lord that God has called you to and you haven't achieved this because of the bitterness and the offense in your spirit. And until that's not done and taken care of, you will not see the fullness of that ministry. And it's the truth. Now, what does it mean to be sincere and without offense? Without offense meaning is like, without offense means this. It's a two-part word. It's not being, not having offense in your heart and not having offense towards the Lord. Meaning like that you live in such a way where you don't offend him, where you don't bring offense to him. See, when God is offended with something, it's not the same as a human being offended. A human offense is, is a carnal uh, type of offense. What happens is this, the offense that comes is kind of like this, that person hurt me. Then all of a sudden it seeps into you bitterness malice and strife but when god is offended he it's it's a hurt that comes that is purely from him that demands that you get right with him it's not the same So the Lord wants you to be without offense, without offense in your heart, without offense towards others. And he wants you to, to be completely free. And he doesn't want offense. He doesn't want his spirit to be offended by the lack of love. And then look at what verse 11 says. It says, being, whoops. Being filled, the love will cause you to do this, the love of God. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Now notice that there's only one fruit of the Spirit, but there are fruits, plural, of righteousness. Meaning there are things that God has called you to do. There are fruits. There are things to do. Fruits of righteousness. Right standing with God and right standing with others. He wants you to be filled with the fruits of righteousness. The fruit of the righteousness of Christ that comes from your salvation. But also the righteousness of being right before Him and also being right before others. Which are by Christ to the glory and praise of God. You see that? Now let me show you another scripture. Let me just find it real quick. Yeah, it is actually, never mind. It's Philippians 1.9. Um, let me read to you in the Amplified Version of Philippians 1.9. Let me 
just pull it out. Philippians chapter 1, verse 9. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more and extend to its fullest development in knowledge and all and in all keen insight and listen to this it says that your love may display itself in greater depth of acquaintance and more comprehensive discernment listen so that you may surely learn to sense what is vital and approve and prize what is excellent and of real value recognizing the highest and the best and distinguishing the moral differences that you may be untainted and pure and unerring and blameless so that the hearts sincere and certain and unsullied you may approach the day of christ not stumbling nor causing others to stumble there is a day of christ approaching and the Lord wills for you to walk in that day of Christ without stumbling and boldness, being confident. But the only way to do that is through love. Many people on the day of Christ are going to feel lack. They're going to feel shame. But you can choose love today and come boldly. I'll read it again. Verse 9 of the Amplified Version. It says, And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more and extend to its fullest development in knowledge and in all keen insight, that your love may display itself in greater depth of acquaintance and more comprehensive discernment, so that you may surely learn to sense what is vital and approve the things and what is excellent and of real value, recognizing the highest, recognizing the best, and recognizing, distinguishing before uh, the moral differences, that you may be untainted and pure and unerring and blameless, so that with heart sincere, certain and unsullied, you may approach the day of Christ, not stumbling nor causing others to stumble. Verse 11, may you abound and be filled with the fruits of righteousness, of right standing with God and right doing, which comes through Jesus Christ, the anointed one, to the honor and praise of God, that his glory may be both manifested and recognized. Powerful. Powerful truth. Powerful truth. So, what are we called to do? I want you to meditate on verse, whoops, hold on a second, sorry, I want you to meditate, think, ponder, grasp, think about verse 6, he's begun a good at work in you and he will complete it to the day of Christ. I want you to meditate on verse 8 where it says, God is my witness, how greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus, that God wants you to love with the love and the affection of Christ himself. And I want you to meditate on the reality that's found in Romans 5, where it says that the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart through the Holy Spirit. So as I go into the Holy Spirit, as I spend time with the Holy Spirit, as He becomes my very canopy and my treasure, as He becomes my personal, acquainted, not knowing of who He is, as He becomes my shelter, I receive His love and I give out that which I have received. Amen? Amen. Now, if you have a question, go ahead and put a Q in front of the question. I only have about seven minutes. And while I wait for those questions to come in, please make sure that the question is in relationship to this study. If it is not, I will not respond to it uh, because it will, it, it, will, it, will, it will cause the stream to be very distracted unless the Lord leads me to answer it. Um, and number two, what I also want to say is while we're waiting for questions, while we wait for the queue in front of the question, put a queue in front of it, um, like the stream, 
so that the engagement can can reach more people subscribe to the channel if you haven't had a chance to and also subscribe to victory church's youtube channel which is the church that i that i help pastor in uh, victory church fort smith um it's i encourage you to subscribe there help us to reach a thousand subs there uh so that uh we're able to give out more for the glory of god amen okay arlena says what scriptures that is philippians philippians chapter 1 verses 3 through 11 philippians chapter 1 verses 3 through 11 okay Madeline says, I'm being sanctified and I spend so much time crying but being angry at those around me. Look at what the answer is found in the question. You're being sanctified. Keep yielding and keep allowing the Lord to do the work in you. What Bible app do you use to study the word? I use Logos. Logos Bible software. And I also use... Um, the Amplified Bible, I use New King James, I use the Strong's Concordance, but usually all of my stuff comes from Logos, it has all of that all in one. You can do the free version on a tablet. Also, here is Victory Church's YouTube channel, Jennifer Cruz, thank you so much for putting that on there. Let me actually pin this. Let me actually pin I just pinned Victory Church's YouTube channel. Um, so please subscribe to that channel there and subscribe to ours if you haven't had a chance to. Tanya, um, where are you getting the word Hebrew? Uh, where are you getting the word Hebrew interpretation from Pastor Chris? Well, again, using those softwares, uh, using the Logos Bible app, there's a Strong's Concordance. Bib, uh, Hebrew and Greek lexicons are contained in the Logos Bible app. You can also purchase the Strong's Concordance either by book format or also um, on, via app. All right. How do I tell someone about God who has had bad experiences with Christians? Like when I tell them about God, they think bad, that bad experience be that experience to that person that person doesn't need to be told just yet just be jesus to that person JR, what do you mean about sexual confusion? I think uh, someone responded to that question already. But sexual confusion, is th that's what it is. I, I just, I saw that by vision. That there was someone watching on the stream with sexual confusion. Whether it be that they're struggling with similar same-sex attractions. Or they're struggling in their gender. The Lord wants to bring healing to that. There's a confusion in that area. The Lord wants to bring clarity through the love of God. All right. Would you stay in a church that is cessationist, asking because of what you said about moving to a different church? I would be very led of the Spirit to pray about where to go. There may be a season that God may want you there for a season. But if, if there is very strong cessationism, there isn't going to be the immediate presence of the Spirit in the midst of that because of the belief of the ceasing of the gifts. So I would pray about uh, choosing where to go. That is between you and the Holy Spirit. I've been struggling with some addiction after relapse, but I'm slowly turning back. But I'm struggling with the thought that God doesn't lo love me anymore because I've fallen, but I've gotten up. Listen, let me give you a really good um, thought here. Anytime you have to understand that the carnal mind is always going to be an enmity towards God. So when you fall, when you relapse, and when you when you make these sins, 
you've yielded to the carnal impulses. Therefore, that carnal mind will always be at enmity towards God. And so what that what I'm trying to say is you cannot trust what you're feeling at the moment. You cannot trust what you're thinking at the moment because there's carnality that has seeped in. So you're going to have to ignore those feelings and thoughts because they're lies. Your mind is being at enmity towards God. And so you need to just run to the presence of God and sit there and soak there until faith rises for you to see the reality. What about pastors who curse members when they leave their church or treats members unfairly? How would you advise, uh, would you advise one to stay in such an environment? I would advise you to do what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. I've been in environments like that and the Lord has led me out of there. All right. Is it wrong to not want to go back there? Truly forgive, but I didn't ask God for that either. Believe in guarding my heart. Is that a wise thing to do? I would pray and seek the Lord until your healing has occurred in the area of unforgiveness. And if the Lord, there's, I'll tell you something that happened to me. There was a pastor that deeply wounded me early on in my years serving the Lord. Deeply, deeply wounded me through words. And he would, he would like, he was just not a good example of a, of a godly shepherd. The Lord led me to move out of there and the Lord separated me to be in another congregation and he did a work of healing in my heart it took about a year for it for the lord to release full healing after that year was over he told me to go back to that pastor and ask for his forgiveness i was like but i didn't do nothing wrong i was obedient and that thing was severed and broke but the lord did not call me back there i was simply obedient to do what he asked me to do and trust me, I'm speaking from experience. All right. I think I already answered that question. Yes, JR, it can be going back to the same thing. How do you deal with fear? You deal with fear by running to love. Perfect love casts out fear. Fear and love cannot stay in the same place. So the way to deal with fear is by abiding and running to the love and presence of the Lord. All right. Okay. Now, guys, this it is it is that time. It's time for me to get going. Guys, love you all. Please do me a favor. Please, please, please. I just want to say this. Thank you guys so very much for sowing into the ministry. We've received some donations as it relates to purchasing the new sound system and the new media system that we want to implement at Victory Church. And I just want to say thank you so very much for reaching out and sowing into that. If you want to continue to sow into that, you can. We are still believing for more of those finances for that. You can do that by texting GLORY to 801801. Amen. Also, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If this has been a blessing to you. Also, I pinned Jennifer Cruz's comment on victory that is the church where i co-pastor at please do me a favor and subscribe to that channel amen as well and then also we are finishing up this book we're we should be done by tomorrow the latest and i will be sending you guys all the free ebook called seven keys to the uncommon spiritual life seven keys to grow from glory to glory in your personal walk with the Lord. The way to receive that 
is by going to fathersglory.org, click sign up, and put your email there. Do not email me. I cannot do it for you. You have to do it yourself, okay? Love you guys, and we will see you tomorrow morning for another up uh, for another fresh oil stream amen if this has been a blessing to you share this with a friend amen who needs this blessings to you in jesus name god bless